In this video, I'm going to be going over my pros and cons of the new Galaxy A34 5G. Stay tuned. Big wireless companies are actually currently raising their prices right now to pass on the cost of inflation to their own customers but not Mint. This video is brought to you by our new partners at Mint Mobile. Now you may already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny commercials with Ryan Reynolds, who is actually an owner of Mint Mobile. But let me quickly tell you about their awesome service. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network, and also they keep the cost low because they sell directly to you online, and they cut out the salespeople and the retail stores, of course which we all love to deal with, of course. Now, why should you have to pay more to access the same network? That could be used on a Hulu subscription or, of course, updating your Netflix subscription. Switching to Mint Mobile is actually super easy thanks to their eSIM cards. You can sign up and activate immediately on your phone from the comfort of your own home. You can keep your current device, your phone number, and you can easily switch services. And if your device isn't eSIM compatible, don't worry. Mint Mobile will send you a SIM card free of charge. All Mint Mobile plans actually include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G, and of course our free hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan, which actually lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. To learn more, use my link in the description down below to get premium wireless as low as $15 at mintmobile.com slash techright. Stop paying more than you need to on your current wireless bill and start saving big with Mint Mobile. All right, everyone, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Hopefully everyone is safe out there. We've got some pros and cons on the new A34 5G. And if you guys have any pros and cons of your own, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. I would definitely love to know your experience on this device thus far, but I've been having a decent time with this device. So we're going to get the good stuff out of the way first and those are going to be the pros of the a34 and the first one is going to be the super amoled display plus the 120 hertz refresh rate so now in the a30 series it looks like we are getting a 120 hertz refresh rate which is always great to see really do like what i'm seeing so far on this display there's a lot of other stuff on the display we're going to be talking about later but 120 hertz straight off the bat super amoled just beautiful beautiful looking display watching movies on this watching youtube on this is just going to be a great experience and uh, i think you guys are really going to enjoy it next pro on the galaxy a34 5g now if you guys know the galaxy a54 released alongside the a34 and that device had a glass back but this device actually has a plastic back um, but it still manages to feel extremely premium. So very, very nice premium build, almost flagship-like with our very, very minimal um, style right here with the three camera rings on the back, making it almost impossible to differentiate from the new Galaxy S23. So if you guys are worried about getting the A34 and you think it's gonna look like a cheaper phone, it really doesn't look like a cheaper phone. It also doesn't really feel like a cheaper phone. So this is going to be a great quality build, even though the majority of the A34 is going to be made out of plastic. Really, really like the colors on these devices this year as well. I've really enjoyed this, and uh, I think you guys are going to have a good time with this. Also, the A34 display is actually a little bit bigger than the Galaxy A54, so you do get 0.2 inches, but it still is 0.2 inches bigger than the A54. So this is a bigger boy than that phone. All right, guys, getting into the third pro on this device, we actually have Android 13 out of the box, and we are gonna have Samsung One UI 5.1 as well. So we have the most recent update for the Galaxy A34 5G, the most recent software as well. Um, I know everybody just got the beta of the new Android 14, but this is the newest, most official and finished or polished Android software out right now. So that's great to see. Also, once you guys load up your Galaxy A34, there is going to actually be another security patch so they are going to be sending out updates on this a34 like crazy not to mention that we have four years of operating system updates up to android 17 and five years of security patches so this is going to be very very future proof for anyone out there that wants to use a device for more than one or two years our next pro is going to be the speed
speakers on the Galaxy A34 5G. Now I know this test isn't really going to do this justice and I did this in the unboxing as well, um, but we're just going to show you how these speakers sound or try to show you how these speakers sound. Um, this is also going to be utilizing the headset as a speaker as well. So this is going to have stereo speakers on this, but the speakers on this device are just such great quality. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are going to overlook that, but very, very premium sounding, crisp, um, just loud speakers on this device. So you guys are going to have a great time with the sound on this. Now I have to say my second favorite pro next to the speakers has to be the haptics on the Galaxy A34. Now, I think the haptics are actually really, really strong. And for anybody that already has the Galaxy A34, I'd very much recommend doing this. So what you're gonna do is go into the settings. You're going to type in vibration. So type in vibration intensity. We're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're going to scroll down to vibration intensity, click on this and turn your system vibration all the way up. Now, once you turn that up, your vibration intensity is going to feel much better, but we have some premium haptics on this device and they honestly really surprised me um, with the vibration, with the texting on the keyboard and all that type of stuff. Vibration and haptics have been really, really good. And the last pro is going to be about the display. I know I maybe should have added this to the to the first pro that we had here, but I thought it was just such a, a great thing that they did on this device compared to its predecessor that um, I just had to mention it in its own slot and putting it, put it in its own slot, I guess. But the Galaxy A34 has a thousand nits. Now, even compared to the Galaxy A53, the bigger brother of the A33 um, from last year, which is not even the predecessor of the A34, the A33 would be that, um, but the A53 had 800 nits. So seeing that we went from the A53 to the A54, the A34 even has a thousand nits. So in direct sunlight, the A34 display is going to be extremely bright. And this is one of the brightest mid-range phones I've ever seen. So this device is not going to lack in the brightness arena. And you guys are going to have a great time, whether you're at the beach, at the park, outside. Um, I'm in California and we get sun all the time. It's mostly sunny days. We have been getting a lot of cloudy weather, but um, sunny days all around great device to have in, in those types of environments for sure so a thousand nits on the a34 some great stuff and we are finally getting into the dreaded cons of the galaxy a34 5g now we have a few that we're going to mention you know the last two are going to kind of be a little bit nitpicky um, but the first three are some big big cons uh, and they're probably going to be the defining factor between choosing the a34 or something else so the first one obviously is going to be the price and um, just the other options that are around this price tag now as you know the galaxy a34 isn't going to be available in the united states but the prices of these devices overseas starting off with europe it's going to be 399 euros in europe and great british pound sterling in the uk um, I just think there are many other options, not just in the used market, but new as well. You can get the Pixel 7 only being $349, so it's probably going to be even cheaper in the UK. Uh, and in both markets, you'll be able to get the Pixel 6a as low as $299 brand new. Not to mention, we also have the Pixel 7a seemingly going to be around the same price as this device or even cheaper. And obviously, you guys know we're going to have the Tensor G2 in that. Um, just a really, really great processor, um, extremely optimized, and also the camera is just going to kill the A34's camera. We also have some other used Samsung devices on Amazon that I think just are just a better deal. Uh, we have the S21, we have the S21 FE um, that you can get used, um, and some other newer devices that I just think are some better options than the A34, but if you guys want Samsung One UI, if you guys want a brand new device, if you guys want four years of OS updates, five years of security patches, the A34 5G is going to bring that, and at 349 British Sterling or 399 euros, I still think this is a pretty decent price tag. Our next con is going to be that this does not come with a charger. Samsung, please, please start putting chargers in your boxes again. I don't, I don't know if this has to do with the economy. I don't know if they just figured like, hey, we can get away with not putting a charger in a box anymore. But 
for the people that are buying a mid-range phone or a budget phone chances are a lot of them are coming like especially like the, the the older people a lot of them are coming from flip phones because their flip phones are kind of getting phased out because they're not uh, capable of 5g or even 4g some of them so people that are going from flip phones to you know the galaxy a34 5g or some new you know smartphone they want to get a little bit of a cheaper phone they're not going to have a charger and they're going to have to buy it separately. So that's definitely a big con on the A34 5G. The next two cons, these are kind of, I, I guess one of them you may not feel like it's nitpicky. Um, I'll go ahead and state that one first. We do not have a headphone jack on this device anywhere to be found. So no headphone jack on the Galaxy A34 5G. Um, for the audio files out there that use Sennheisers, AKGs, things of that nature, they like listening to um, a certain type of... Uh, quality music with either quad drivers or triple drivers instead of their headphones and want just a natural rich sound of music um, this device may not be for you because it doesn't have the option for a headphone jack we can always use a little dongle but obviously can't charge at the same time and also it's just something extra that's there to lose and to um obviously just mess up and stuff it's just it's just a kind of a big problem i know there's dongles out there but for anybody that wants to use your earbuds you gotta go with the dongle, kinda sucks though. And the last and final con on this device, the fingerprint sensor on this is, is a little bit slow, to be quite honest. It's not the fastest in the game. I would say the same about the Galaxy A54, I don't think it's that amazing, um, but that's getting a little nitpicky. I don't think it's bad by any means, but um, you know, it could be a little bit faster. So hopefully they do update some like that later on in the next iteration, maybe the A35 and the A55. But for right now, it is kind of slow, but I am getting a little nitpicky on that. But those are my pros and cons on the Galaxy A34 5G. Um, do you guys agree? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you guys hate my guts because I stated my opinions on a phone? Let me know. Love you guys. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Also, consider subscribing if you guys want to be a part of the Tech King. But this has been Safan from Tech, right? Peace out, Tech King.